Good day and welcome to the presentation on nieces. Um, in this presentation, we're going to focus specifically on the recognition exemption that is available to the lessee. As mentioned in Part A, the lessee may apply the recognition exemption. Um, this is where the lease transaction is exempted from applying if for 16 lease principles that relate to a lease of the lessee. And we may apply this to the lessee when the lease is a short-term lease. In other words, a, um, a lease that has a lease term of less than 12 months or a low value asset. And therefore the cost of the asset when brand new is less than $5,000. So in this presentation, we will focus on the recognition exemption and I will explain how it works. And we will also have a look at the disclosure uh, related to leases where the re recognition exemption is applied. So how do we account for the lease transaction if the lessee applies the recognition exemption? Now, some refer, refer to this exemption as a simplified accounting method, as there is limited disclosure that relates to it, and the calculation is actually quite straightforward when compared to a lease for the lessee. Now, very important, before the recognition exemption can be applied, apart from meeting the requirements on the previous slide, the lessee must also elect to apply the recognition exe um, exemption. When applying the recognition exemption, the lease payments are recognized as a lease expense on a straight line basis over the lease term. So in other words, the lease payments accounted for in profit or loss will be the same amount throughout the lease term. When we look at this a bit later, this will hopefully make a bit more sense. The lessee can also make use of another systematic basis if it is more representative of the pattern of the lessee's benefits. When it comes to the disclosure requirements, the, the standard requires the lessee to disclose in a tabular format um, the short-term lease expenses, the low-value asset lease expenses, and these amounts are the amounts that are disclosed um, in your statement of profit and loss, and these will be your straight-lined amounts, um, unless, of course, another systematic basis was used. The lessee must also disclose the total cash outflow that the lessee has experienced as a result of the lease transaction, and then in addition to this, the lessee must also disclose any additional qualitative or quantitative information required to allow the users of the financial statements to assess the effect the lease has on the entity. The lessee must also disclose the fact that they have elected and applied the recognition criteria to the short term or the low value assets. And lastly, the lessee must disclose the amount of the short term lease commitments to which it is committed at the end of the reporting period. If this amount is different to the short term lease expenses that, are, that have already been disclosed. So let's work through the following example to address the principles covered thus far. Barry Limited entered into a lease agreement with Tiger Limited on 1 July 2018 to lease a computer for a period of three years. The lease agreement contains a lease in terms of IFRA 16 leases. The cost of a new computer that is the same as a lease computer amounts to 15,000 Rand. Benny Limited has elected to apply the recognition exemption to all short-term or low-value assets. The terms of the lease agreement were as follows. The lease term is three years. There's an initial payment being the deposit of 300 Rand. Then there are monthly installments in arrears of 250 Rand, an annual increase of 10% starting on 30 June 2019, and Benny Limited depreciates its computer equipment over a period of three years. Now the required states that we need to disclose the above lease in the notes of the annual financial statements of Benny Limited for the financial year ended 31 December 2018 and the comparative figures are not required. Now remember comparative figures are not required. That's important because most times you are told that you need to account for the transaction in terms of your international financial 
um, reporting standards and part of that is that you need to disclose your comparatives which we do not need to do yet so if we just highlight a few things quickly um, we see that Benny Limited has elected to apply the recognition exemption to all short-term or low-value assets so we need to look whether or not this asset or this lease would actually fall into the criteria of either a short-term or low-value asset. So first of all, the lease of the computer will be for a period of three years. Therefore, it's definitely not a short-term lease because it must be less than 12 months. The computer, a new one, will amount to 15,000 Rand. Now, generally, the um, the requirements are that for a low value asset, it must be under $5,000 brand new. So generally you could work on an amount roughly of about 60,000 and this does come under 60,000 and therefore this would qualify as a low value asset. So in this case, we would, we would be able to apply the recognition exemption. The required states that you need to disclose the lease transaction in the notes to the annual financial statements of Benny Limited. Therefore, as good exam technique, it would be good to write out the layout of the notes so that once you have calculated the amounts, you can just transfer it to the notes. Very important, the required states that comparative figures are not required. This is important as if it is not mentioned in a question, it means you will need to disclose the current and prior year's figures in the financial statements. Once you have written out the notes of the disclosure, then you can start the calculations. As the recognition exemption applies, you will straight line the lease payments over the lease term. We do this by calculating the total value of all the lease payments that will be paid over the entire lease term. Therefore, we start with our initial payment of 300 Rand and from the period 1 July 2018 to 30 June 2019, we have monthly installments of 250 Rand. So we have to say 250 multiplied by 12, which gives us an annual um, lease installment of 3000 Rand. Then from 1 July 2019 to 30 June 2020, it will be 250 multiplied by 1.1. Now remember there is an annual increase of 10% in the lease payments. And then we need to multiply this by 12, which gives us an amount of 3,300 Rand. Then from 1 July 2020 to 30 June 2021, 30 June 2021 is when the lease ends. It will be 275 multiplied by 1.1. Again, remember that the annual increase is on 1 July, which is, and the annual increase is 10%. And then we need to multiply by 12, which gives us a total annual amount for that period of 3,630. So we add all those amounts together that gives us a total amount for the lease of 10,230. Now we need to straight line the amount over the lease term and therefore we will divide the total amount by 36 months, which is three years. So that gives us a monthly straight lined amount of 284 Rand. But we are not done yet, as we need to disclose this amount in the notes to the annual financial statements of Benny Limited. Now we know that the lease was entered into on 1 July 2018, and the financial year end is 31 December 2018. Therefore, we need to multiply the amount by 6, as 6 months of the lease transaction relate to the 2018 financial year. But now there is a situation where your actual amount paid does not equal to the equalized amount. So you have either an overpayment or an underpayment compared if you have to compare it to your statement of profit or loss. So how do we account for this difference? Well, we start by calculating our actual payments um, for the period which is the 250 multiplied by six. Remember we said there's six months in the year, 
for this financial year, plus the 300 Rand deposit that we've paid, which gives us an amount of 1,800. Then we need to deduct the amount that we recognize in the statement of profit or loss, which is the 284 Rand and 17 cents multiplied by six being the 1,705. Now in this example, the actual payments exceed the equalized amount. And therefore we will recognize a prepaid expense as the entity has paid more than they needed to based on what is recognized in the statement of profit or loss. If however, these amounts were the other way around, where the amount recognized in profit or loss was higher than the actual payments, then you would take, then you would recognize an accrued expense. As the notes have already been completed and the calculations are complete, all that is left for us to do is transfer the amounts that we've calculated to our disclosure. We calculated the straight line amount up until 31 December 2018 to be 1,705, which we will disclose as the low value asset lease expense. Next, we need to disclose our total actual payments of 1,800, which we disclose under cash payments um, in our total cash outflows. And lastly, we have the 95 Rand, that is the difference between the actual amount paid and the amount we recognize in our statement of profit or loss that must be disclosed as a prepaid expense. That, that is the end of the disclosure when it comes to the recognition exemption. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.